Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Uh, today we are on the website of Teresio Fine Instruments and Bows that are based both in the US, uh, in New York and in the UK, in London. Um, today we're looking at their New York sale of fine instruments uh, and this is running from uh, the 9th to the 25th of March. Uh, 2021 uh, it is the 24th of March today so uh, there's one day left um, uh, the last couple of auctions I've been quite busy so we're just kind of seeing them near to the end uh, I can tell you as before that um, similar to the Bromptons uh, there's a 20% buyer's premium on top of anything that you purchase so whatever the final bid amount is you need to add 20% on top of that and that's before any kind of additional cost for shipping or for kind of import fees if you do not live uh, in the US in the case of this uh, particular sale. Um, Teresio also have a similar process to Brompton's like a first in first out um, kind of deal where if you're the first person to bid and then you end up winning it you basically save two percent off the buyer's premium so your buyer's premium is 18 percent um which is quite handy um i mean it'd be nice if it was uh, more five percent but two percent is good um i've had that a couple of times actually at teresia uh, not teresia at brompton's and so it's good to save a little bit of uh, money uh, without further ado, um, we'll go through this uh, auction. And not too many lots today, 89, because this is the fine auction. Because uh, we only have a day left to go, there's a few bids on things, which is actually quite interesting. Sometimes if I look at the auction a bit too early, then we don't see any bids. It's good to kind of get a general interest. It's good to see the auctions uh, on the final day as well, actually. But um, that's not always possible. And a lot of these auction houses, the information disappears kind of as soon as it's finished so sometimes if you wait too long you kind of miss out seeing what's going on so sometimes yeah good to see it just like the day before so without further ado and i'll stop prattling on let's uh, have a look what they have okay so the first lot a double violin case from the firm of w e hill and sons the famous shop in london uh, which the original shop is no more but uh, I believe the name has been uh, bought out uh, recently and they set up shop again in North London uh, making violins and bows it's kind of a higher end price uh, anyway so this is X Zeno Frenscati uh, leather exterior grey velour interior with a brown protective cover so quite a few pictures there of uh, this case so um, yeah it's quite quite popular twelve hundred dollars so you know a lot of uh, popular for the owner popularity for the owner so there you go one day 46 minutes remaining on that let's uh, go to the next lot a French cello bow by Prosper Colas, round stick, nickel mounted. They seem to have changed their layout a bit on the auctions. It seems a little bit different. I'm not sure I really like the look, but yeah, it's a little bit different. Uh, or maybe I'm just imagining it. Uh, you can request condition reports uh, if you wanted. Um, let's not get into this too much, but let's have a quick look. Yep, you can see the full size images. So that's nice. Yeah, and it's also fourteen hundred dollars on that. So this is the final auction. So things are going to be a bit more expensive. Uh, a German cello bow by Christian Wilhelm Knopf. Um, I think I mentioned this in one of the previous auctions um, that these Knopf family bows, as a few different makers, they can be quite f uh, fancy inlaid, kind of on the stick above the frog and on the frog itself, and even the button actually. Uh, quite interesting uh, so it's unstamped round stick and figured amaret uh, silver mounted floor in later frog 89.5 grams high bid three thousand seven fifty dollars so far uh, condition report I think in these Teresio uh, listings that if it's in green it means that it's kind of reached its um, reserve and if it's still in red then it's not reached its uh, reserve um, so here's a French cello bow by Andre Richelme. 
Uh, it's quite interesting, actually. They pulled up info here, so you can see the auction record for this make it is twenty-seven thousand dollars for a violin bow. So expect that this might go up a bit higher. Stamped Emil Osha, uh, octagonal stick, silver mounted, seventy-six point five grams with silver lapping. Uh, certificate of Bernard Milland, Paris. Um, you can view the documents. Let's have a look at this. The internet's thinking about it. Does it want to work? Yep, here we go. That's quite nice. It comes up quite big. Yep, that's cool. And we can see see that. Yep. Okay, so that's interesting. And onwards. A fine contemporary French cello bow by Stéphane Thomashot. Thomashot? Got it terrible pronunciation i do like this actually that they pull up the that's a clever thing <laughs> of a clever marketing thing uh stamped s thermal shot paris octagonal stick gold mounted 81 grams certificate by roland baumgartner basil from 2016 you can view the documents but let's not um high bid uh 9500 high bid admin interesting um let's see that let's have a look go on why not let's look at the document just for provenance sake um yeah okay that's cool i like not massively a fan of the layout at the moment but i like the information that's good a fine english cello bow by james dodd stamped j dodd octagonal stick silver mounted 81 grams uh it's got bids a few pictures and they've got interesting a picture at an angle of this one so they're not saying much in their main bits but uh, oh actually just add that if you ask for a um, condition report um, you have to be logged in but they basically they have them ready they just email them to you like straight away it's, it's automatic which I didn't realize before so if you do want a condition report um, log into your account just request it and you'll get it emailed um, shortly I can't remember I don't think they're super detailed but it's still it's a good thing to have uh, a fine Italian cello by uh, Romeo Antonazzi Milan 1912 uh, labeled as such um, there's a feature there uh, about it if you want to learn a bit more uh, so Teresa are gonna issue a certificate for this um, if you kind of purchase it uh, and it has a certificate from Roland Baumgartner and Basil um, so that's yep that's good um, yeah it's popular eighty five thousand dollars let's uh, skip through these pictures so it comes out pretty pretty big I mean these are good detail pictures you can really see what's going on an inch different to the T2 the cheaper affordable Teresio auctions uh, although maybe they've changed that as well we'll see because I think there's a catalogue that's due to be up on the Teresio T2 soon yeah, you can really see the detail there in the, in the peg box so yeah, good pictures I mean they are one of the leading uh, auction houses for musical instruments so you'd hope that they would uh, know what they're doing uh, okay it's lots of sold in US dollars yes high bid ID 0071912 uh, okay moving on German viola bow by Richard Weichold Stamped as such, round six, silver mounted tubs model, 73.5 grams. Yep, pretty standard. And here. Hmm, highest bidder, the OG. Interesting. Um, a German viola bow by Reinhold. Dotschgale, that is a difficult one to pronounce. Um, yep, let's 
hope there's no many no more uh, bones by that maker so don't have to attempt to bastardize that name again Strauss Strauss is the bidder this is fascinating a contemporary American viola boat by Randy L Steenbergen okay stamped as such octagonal stick silver mount 72.5 grams uh, there's bidders on it let's have a quick look I like this auction so far it's interesting my favorite word and Brompton's favorite word interesting uh, a viola bow made for George Withers and Sons stamped Geo Withers and Sons around six silver mounted 66 grams okay just for provenance to try and look as many pictures as possible if someone wants to look back at this video in in the future a viola bow made for Vedudes stamped Vedudes Genevieve octagonal six silver mounted 73 grams uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm not in a way. I'm not sure why they don't just put the. Uh, maybe it's just in terms of document storage. Why they don't have like the condition reports like kind of up there as say our Martin uh, Bromptons do. But I'm sure there's a reason for it. Uh, they are very helpful though. If you contact them, they will reply pretty quickly. Uh, a contemporary Belgian viola bow by Pierre Guillaume. Stamped uh, Guillaume, Brussels, round stick, silver mounted, 66.5 grams. Nice looking head. Yeah. An English viola bow, Dodd family, stamped Dodd. Round stick, silver mounted, later frog, made for the bow in the hill workshop. There you go. Just a little nick out of the tip of the bow there. Yeah. A fine contemporary French viola bow by Stéphane uh, Thomacot. Uh, octagonal stick, gold mounted, 69.5 grams. Let's have a quick look. Do, 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 do. A French viola bow by Andre Richon, stamped illegibly, around stick silver mounted, sixty nine grams, certificate of Paul Charles Montrose, New York. Lovely. Okay. Get a angled shot I'm not sure why some of them have an angled shot and some don't I'm not sure about that right uh, a viola contemporary viola Italian viola by Andre Caccia Mantua early 21st century labeled as such uh, signs label Brandon Turnley brand is a low rib length back 42.7 certificate by the maker let's have a look at this document just in case you end up seeing an instrument like this let's have a quick look okay you can see where it's had it kind of a center mounted uh, chin rest there okay that's the branding there nice uh, bee stings on that <clears throat> so let's quickly see. Let's have a quick zoom in on this. Nice. A uh, good one of the label. You don't often see the labels actually. 2008. Okay, yeah, it's good to see the labels. Okay, very interesting. An American viola by Conrad Heberlein, Chicago, 1952. Branded internally, 41.9. Um, let's see. This is better fit to screen, I think, although it's really good to see the blown up pictures, but for the sake of the video, I think it's better to do that. It's an interesting mark there, isn't it? Down the 
center of that and there's the scroll and there's the label St. Louis okay that's quite a lot of photos in that more photos than I was expecting um, okay an Italian viola by Gitano Pereschi Pienza 1978 length back 42 so there's a few violas here let's uh, have a quick whiz through the pictures here Moving on, an Italian viola by uh, Natalie Carletti, um, labelled as such, 42.1, that's a good high bidder, Lucy, okay, I believe also, I'm not sure about the current situation with the pandemic, but Terezio are very friendly about trying things as well and very welcoming from what I've heard. Um, Italian Viola by Andrea Cortese, Genoa, 1954, length about 43. Let's have a look at these pictures. It's got that inked around the pig box. Looks like it's got had some kind of something going on there. Scroll. Yeah, so good amount of uh, pictures for sure. Very nice. An Italian viola, 18th century Volvo. Is interested in that. Dimensions altered. So let's have a look. So it probably means that it's something's been changed, maybe it's been cut down or something like that. But I'm sure that'll probably be popular. And a fine Italian viola by Pietro Scarabotto, Parma, 1947. There you can even kind of see the, the video. Let's see, can we play this? <laughs> Well, there you go. You can watch a video. Probably best not to uh, watch that too much. Probably a copyright strike or something. Uh, performer certificate that Teresia will provide if you buy it. Um, Berg is uh, bidding on that. Let's have a quick look through the pictures. Yeah, really uh, a lot of images. Okay. A fine Italian viola by Vittorio Melarosa, Naples, 1932, once again. Look at that at your own leisure. Uh, pro forma, again. Let's have a look. Quick look at the pictures go to crazy yep. could see the it's interesting this scroll is a bit uh, looks like it's twisted a bit you see that front uh, view it's like a slight sli there's a slight twist on that uh, scroll that's quite curious you can even see it in the main picture there. how interesting a german uh, violin bow by gustav prager octagonal stick silver mounted 63 grams have a quick look at the 
look at this. I think there's some very high ticket items a bit later on. A French violin bow by Prosper Colas. Round stick, nickel mounted. That's a good uh, name. <laughs> all, uh, all zeros, I like that. Good bidding name. Uh, a French violin bow by Francois Lot. Stamp Lupo, round stick, nickel mounted, 59 grams. Uh, it's got a raffin certificate. So it's probably come from the auctions. Why not? Let's have a quick look at this. I do like to just look at these certificates. Okay. And moving on. A contemporary American violin bow by Randy Steenbergen. So another Steenbergen bow. A contemporary Chinese violin bow by Qian Feng Li. Stamp JF Li, round six silver mounted certificate from the maker. Let's have a quick look. Yep. S snow, uh, what? Snow, uh, snow or Python or something like that. Uh, is the <laughs> bit of that interesting? So it's popular. A French violin bow by Charles Louis Bazin. Uh, stamp Simon FR, round technical mounted, certificate Raffin. Okay. A 7 8, seven eight size French violin bow by Emile Francois Ouchard. Stamped Cuno Huri, round technical mounted, 60 grams. Frank Daguin uh, certificate from 2018. Let's have a look at that one actually. Why not? Why not when we're here? Okay. Looks like my school homework, that uh, certificate. Doesn't look that official. Um, let's carry on. A French violin bow by Emile Francois Ouchard. Certificate Raffin again. Nickel mounted 58.5 grams. Let's have a look at this. Okie dokie. French violin bow by Louis Morizon. Uh, 57 grams. Raffin certificate again. French violin bow by Marcel Lapierre. Let's have a look at this. An English violin bow, stamped J Tubbs, round stick, silver mounted. No bids as yet. It's quite. I'll just have a look at that actually. It's quite a bit of, bit of wear there. A French violin bow by Charles Louis Bazin, stamped Emile Ouchard, fifty grams. Stick fit. Certificate of Raffin. Okay. French violin bow by Roger Francois Lot. Silver mounted, 61 grams. German violin bow by H.R. Frechner. Octagonal fluted stick. 59.5 grams interesting uh, button there a violin bow made for Sylvestre and Mocatel Paris octagonal stick silver mounted Beethoven is bidding on that so that's uh, interesting A violin, a French violin bow by Louis Joseph Morizon. Octagonal stick, silver mounted, 63.5 grams. A French violin bow by Charles Nicolas Bazin. Uh, Raffin certificate, silver mounted, button later. Okay. 
A French violin bow by Charles Nicolas Bazin. Uh, silver mounted, 58 grams. Certificate of Paul Charles Montrose, New York. A French violin bow by Claude Thomasin. Round stick nickel mounted certificate of Paul Childs. French violin bow by Nicolas Simon. Unstamped round stick in Brazil wood nickel mounted 58 grams. Certificate Salcho and Sons New York from 2009. Let's actually have a quick look at that uh, certificate. Why not? Okay. A French violin bow made for Georges Chanot. Octagonal stick, silver mounted, 58 grams. Admin. It's bidding on this. A French violin bow, circle of Francois Picat. Unstamped round stick in Amaret, nickel mounted, 66 grams. Certificate of Pierre Guillaume, Brussels, 2018. Cigar is bidding on that. A French violin bow by Victor Fetic. Silver mounted, 64 grams. Paul Charles certificate on that one. Okay. French violin by Joseph Arthur, Arthur Vigneron. Vigneron, Paris. Silver mounted, 60.5 grams, Paul Charles certificate there. Let's just have a quick look at this certificate because we haven't looked at many of the Paul Charles ones. That's a fancy looking thing. Um, French violin bow by Emile Auguste Ouchard. Round stick, silver mounted frog and button, original to stick and made by Emile F. Oshar. 61.5 grams, Paul Child's certificate. Okay. French violin bow by Emile Auguste Oshar. Tagging stick, silver mounted, Paul Child's certificate, 63 grams. So it's a few of uh, these Oshar bows. Another one, a French violin bow by Emile Auguste Auchard. Stamped twice. X Arnold Sukonic. Round stick, silver mounted, stamped at the bottom. 60 grams. Bill of sale from 1954. Photographs from uh, Emile Auchard. Let's have a quick look at that. Nice. Okay. Oh, that's good. 1954 is uh, $150 in 1954 that bow current bid is $15,000 so that was uh, a good investment for someone that's a very tidy tidy head there you go yeah good investment a French violin bow by Hippolyte Camille Lamy uh, silver mounted button later 64 grams Salcho and Sun certificate there We're definitely over halfway now in the auction. A French violin bow by George Leon Lamy. Round stick, silver mounted. A lot of uh, bows in this auction. Not so many instruments so far, but uh, perhaps they are coming. A French violin bow by Joseph Alfred Lamy. Silver mounted, 57 grams. Salcho and Sun certificate. It's inter that's an interesting knot right there. So I mean, I guess yeah, that's an interesting, interesting knot there on that stick. A French violin bow, probably by Francois Nicolas Vorin in Paris. Round stick, silver mounted. Frog later, fifty nine point five grams. Oh, I think we might have, did we skip one there, I think. Oh, that's interesting. So maybe lot 56 has been withdrawn. A French violin bow by Francois Nicolas Ferrand. 
octagonal stick silver mounted full child certificate okay it's had quite a bit of wear there French violin by Bra Francois Nicolas Vorin again, silver mounted, another Paul Child certificate. Yep, a bit of wear there. A French violin bow by Eugene Nicolas Satori. Octagonal stick silver mounted. Frog and button also by Satori, but not original to the stick. 64.5 grams, Salcha and Sons certificate, so that's gonna be interesting. So we've got a crack in that uh, frog, more than one. Okay. A fine French violin by, by Charles Pacat. Stamped twice per cat round stick silver and ivory mounted. Please note, due to side restrictions, this lot cannot be shipped outside the US. So there you go, US only, 62 grams. Uh, that's a problem with CITES. Well, it makes sense to kind of dissuade people from using ivory and tortoise shell. So that will have to stay in the US. Certificate of Paul Child. Uh, also, it's very difficult anyway to travel with bows with uh, ivory or tortoise shell. So it's almost worth kind of if you plan on using it and trying to travel just get a spare frog made for it so uh jong sang 8630 twenty thousand dollars bid there so it's popular it's uh, gonna make a bit a fine french violin bow by francois javier taught unstamped round stick silver mounted frog and button later 52.5 grams paul child's a certificate from 2021 and a Salchen Sons certificate from 2021 within two weeks of each other which is a bit interesting so two certificates for whatever reason that is a bit odd um yeah 30 to 50 thousand it's a high ticket uh, item One of the finest makers. There you go. Record three hundred and sixty seven thousand for a violin bow. Ah, instruments. Right. A French violin by Nicolas Hamand, Mirecourt, seventeen eighty, unlabeled. Branded to the button, NH bearing a repair label. Repare par Schwartz a Strasbourg eighteen thirty nine. Uh interesting. Uh certificate of Claude Lebet, Rome, nineteen eighty eight. Very good. Ooh. That's quite a fairly low estimate. Um, let's have a quick look at the photos that we have here, if the internet works. It's fairly plain, I suppose. It's in, it seems in fairly good condition for its age. A French violin by Emile Pouzol, Avignon, 1937. Uh, Labelled as such, length of work 35.5. So let's see. There's a label, yep. And onwards. A violin, probably Milan, early 20th century, labelled Imitata de Giuseppe Tarasconi Serono Milano, anno 1894, anno 1960. 35.9, length of back. Let's have a look at the, uh, the pictures here. Right, uh, Italian violin from the late production of the late Mario Garda workshop, early 21st century. Labelled Mario Garda in Mantova. Uh, Modelo Stefano Scarampella signs a label, branded internally in the button, uh, length about 35.6. 
blah blah blah. It's got a Mario Garda certificate. I think a lot of uh, funny things went on with uh, that maker, but we'll say no more about that at the moment. And onwards. A contemporary American violin by Michael Danton. Chicago, 1992. Labeled Michael Darden, Chicago. Inscribed to the inside upper rib. Length about 34.9. 34.9. Okay, let's have a look at the pictures. I believe quite a highly regarded uh, American uh, maker. Yeah, it's a shame that we can't see the um, condition reports without getting them emailed. Uh, a contemporary Italian violin by Franco Fortellini, Mantua, early 21st century. Labelled Franco Fortellini, Alivio de Mario Garda, Fesse in Mantua, 1993. Branded to the inside and lower rib. Length about 35.7. Uh, certificate of the maker. There it is. Um, let's have a look at the pictures. There's a lot of uh, contemporary Italian uh, instruments at the auctions at the moment. I mean, maybe that's the case most of the time, but uh, the Bromptons auction, if you watched that last video, was pretty mad on uh, Italian instruments. Uh, a contemporary Italian violin by Luigi Occoli Pistoia, 1998. Uh, faintly branded the inside back and the rib, length back 356, 35.6, and here is a uh, certificate from the maker. Okay. Let's see. Do 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 internet. Looks like it's had a interesting varnish in it. Okay, there's a label. Yeah, it's good to see the labels. There's a stamp on the back. A contemporary Italian violin by Pier, Pier Giuseppe Esposti. Oh, uh, Esposti. Cremona, 2002. Certificate of the Maker. Yep, okay. Um, let's have a look. Do 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 internet. Okay, it's quite an orange, uh, orangey varnish on it. Seventy, a contemporary Italian violin by Sebastian Reeves, Cremona, 2017, brand internal certificate of the maker. I mean. I guess it's difficult, maybe as a lot of the Italian makers are struggling a bit with the pandemic, but uh, a lot of instruments um, in the Brompton cell and this Teresio one from contemporary Italian makers with the uh, certificates. Okay. Contemporary Japanese violin from the Bunkyo Gaki Workshop, Tokyo, 2004. Interesting, I haven't seen many uh, kind of fine Japanese violins, so this is interesting. It's good that they give you the ending time, actually, in New York and London. Never noticed that before. That's quite cool. Bum, 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 internet. Okay, that's interesting. Good to see. A contemporary American violin by Joseph Gruber and Sigrun Seifert, Petaluma, 1991. 35.4, screen. Don't know. Internet's very slow today, sadly. Bringing up all these big pictures. Nice back.
Yeah, it's a, nice, a very nice figure on the, the back of that. Lovely. You can, yeah, I do like that. That's nice. Half size Italian violin by Arturo Fracassi Cesena, 1926. Featured in the Cosio Carteggio. So there you go. It's uh, already been listed in the Cosio archive. Nice back. Quite like the varnish colour on that. They're really, yeah, some good pictures. Definitely liking the pictures. A German violin by Ernst Heinrich Roth, Mark Newkirken, 1928, length back 35.6. A certificate from uh, Roth from 1928, that's interesting. Hmm, how curious. These are very popular in the US, these uh, Roth ones, and you can. I think they're still still going. You can email them. I think they have a list of all of the instruments they've ever made, basically. So for a fee, you can uh, inquire if you think you have one and get details on it. Yeah. A Hungarian violin by Janos Spiegel, Budapest, nineteen eighteen. these okay uh, do, do, do. an English violin by Bella Sepesi London 1910 35.6 a uh, certificate of John and Arthur Beer, London, 1982. Let's have a look. That's the uh, doorbell going there. Okay. That's the uh, Arthur Beer. Actually, let's have a quick look at the uh, Katie's bidding on that. Um, let's have a look. Quite a nice colour of varnish. It's a nice looking instrument. Okay. And moving on. Got a bit distracted there. An English violin by John Johnson, London. It's 1757. Nice. Nice. Uh, made and sold by John Johnson at the Harp and Crown in Cheapside, London. A certificate of William Hills and a receipt from William Hills. Let's see how much this was then in uh, in the sixties. Bum 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 bum. So nineteen sixty five. This was a hundred and seventy five pounds for this particular instrument, and now. We're looking at an estimate of five to eight thousand pounds. So this is really fascinating. These kind of uh, documents that we have. Let's have a look at this because you know I like these old English uh, instruments. So I'm already, I'm already curious. Show me the violin. Okay. There's a peg pushing there. There's a neck graft. Okay. Yeah, I like this. This is uh, interesting to me, as they say. Actually, let's quickly look at this and just want to see the. Can I see the scroll a bit more? Interesting. Onwards, onwards, and let's not dilly daddle too much. Dilly dally, even. Uh, a fine English violin by James and Henry Banks, London, 1796. Length about 35.6. 15 to 22,000. Okay. Nice scroll. 
internet is dying again. James and Henry Banks, Salisbury. Good book about uh, the Banks family that you can get hold of. The Salisbury Violin Maker or Instrument Maker. Uh, Italian Violin by Antonio Carlo Monzino, Milan, 1929. Sold with its original case from the Monzino firm. Nice. Uh, you can read up about this, read on the feature. 35.2. Let's have a quick look. And the pictures. Yeah, nice uh, figure on the back. Very good. Okay. I'm not used to this many pictures, to be honest. Okay. An Italian violin workshop of Giuseppe Prodrazzini, Pedra Pedra Milan, 1931. Uh, I really need to practice names. A length back, 36. Receipt, Ealing Strings, London, 1975. Okay, so how much was this? Oh, they don't want to disclose how much that was. Interesting. Probably because it wasn't very much. Uh, estimate, 15 to 22,000. Let's have a quick look at the instrument itself. Okay. Okay. Uh, an Italian an Italian by Camillo Mandelli, De Calcio, Milan, 1929, uh, I presume, uh, a violin, uh, although they just say an Italian, so it's an Italian something. Uh, let's listen to it. Yes, violin. <laughs> So there you go, they're going to give you a performer, uh, performer certificate if you purchase it. Beatles are uh, buying that. Maybe uh, an, an Abbey Road uh, recording. I need better internet, I think. This is slow internet. Okay. Interesting, it's going to be a bit uh, asymmetrical that scroll, but interesting nevertheless. Okay. Uh, we must be getting closer to the end now, I think. I'm getting tired. Uh, a fine Italian violin by Sesto Rocci Varesa, 1931. Let's listen to it. Once again, they're going to issue you with a pro forma, uh, thirty to fifty thousand estimate. No bids so far. Let's have a quick look at the pictures while we can. Nice back. Ooh, I can just click on that. That's so easy. We're learning. I'm learning how computers work. Excellent. Um, A fine Italian violin by Enrico Clodovio Melagari, Turin, 1885. Let's listen to this. Okay, so they're going to give you a pro forma. There's also a certificate from Kenneth Warren and Sun Chicago, 2016. There's Teresio, yeah, there you go. They're going to pro forma you. Um, so 40 to 16 there's a bit of 30 on it already so we're moving into the we're in the high end uh, well higher end zone um, it's thinking about it the internet is thinking interesting scroll 
Yeah, that's, uh, I quite like scrolls like that. That's an interesting one. Interesting, quite a narrow scroll in a way. But then the uh, peg box is really thick. That's kind of curious, isn't it? Let's have another look at that. Yeah, it's quite curious, like the walls of the peg box are quite thick, but this centre of the scroll quite narrow. Interesting. A fine Italian violin by Avesio Emilio Guerra, Turin, 1940. Let's see. <laughs> Pro for me on that, fifty to eighty thousand, already a bid of fifty on it, so people are interested in that. Okay. Oh we even got uh, bridge, the potentially an original bridge. It's interesting. An interesting, well we're talking about interesting, an interesting Italian violin, circa 1880, ascribed to Benedetto Guffredo Rinaldi. Uh, Dendro report from Peter Ratcliffe, see Peter Ratcliffe doing his work across the world. Um, latest ring on the edge of travel side 1729. Printed report available for purchase upon request. A uh, certificate from William Moaning and Son, Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, 20 to 30. Taxes is the uh, high bid. Maybe someone's trying to write uh, the purchase of a violin off against taxes. That would be interesting and okay nice yeah. nice varnish An interesting Italian violin, late eighteenth century, ascribed to Lorenzo Storioni. Let's hear this. <laughs> Certificate: Henry Wero, Bern, uh, nineteen forty-two, and Walter Hammer and Co. Stuttgart, nineteen forty-one. Interesting. So this is like wartime uh, certificates here in uh, Germany and Switzerland. So that's. Uh, Curious. Um, Thirty to fifty. It's a bit of twenty-four on it. That's interesting. That uh, carving. It's quite rough on the uh, scroll. Interesting the scroll. Has a story only label of some kind. A fine French violin by Jean Baptiste Villiam, Paris, 1864. Labeled Jean Baptiste Villiam of Paris. Uh, Rue de Mors, turns number 2559. A copy of the 1716 Messiah Stradivari. You can read about it there. Um, you can watch <laughs> and then there's a story about the instrument but let's not get into that now uh, pro forma they'll offer you uh, there's a Wurlitzer certificate from 1974 let's have a look uh, there's your pro forma there's your Wurlitzer let's just see if there's anything interesting there uh, ba, 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 ba. So, 150 to 200,000. Reserve is met. 170,000. Nicolo is interested in this. Uh, let's have a quick look. I've seen uh, or held even a genuine uh, Viom and heard it played a few times. It's a nice, nice instrument.
very nice. Now we're into the high end. It must be near the end of the auction now. A fine Italian violin. Oh, what's going on? It? We don't want to uh, sign in. A fine Italian violin by Carlo Giuseppe Testore, Milan, 1695. Ex Arnold Sukonic. So let's hear this one played. <laughs> Length of back 35.3 performer performer from Teresia Stifka William Monaghan son 1954 bill of sale 1954 certificate John and Arthur Beer 1948 certificate Hills and Sons 1914 so there's a lot of documentation here 150 to 220 uh, higher bid 150 at the moment let's have a look at the documents will it tell us how much this cost in the uh, in the 50s or whatever it was let's just see actually interesting yeah. okay certificate no they've blocked out how much it costs because once again I bet that is pretty ridiculous uh, that's what it is now be interesting to see the uh, condition report on this one I do like these to store a scrolls there's something about them that I definitely like nice color varnish okay and i think we've got one more yes the last one a fine italian violin by tommaso balestieri mantua 1770-72 ex adam han gorski labeled thomas balestieri chromonosis visit mantua and 1747 to be featured in the upcoming publication on the violin makers of mantua by philip j cass and andrea zanri uh, you can read about it let's listen to it Okay, stories about it. Nice pro forma certificate. Yep, certificate William Monaghan Son, Philadelphia, PA. Certificate Rembrandt Wurlitzer. Let's have a look. It's good to look at these uh, certificates. So Estimate four hundred fifty to six hundred fifty thousand. This is big money. Shin is the current bidder. Four hundred fifty thousand. Reserve is met. It will sell in theory. Let's have a look at this instrument. It's very nice. Peg bushing on the neck graph there. Nice. I just quite like that scroll, like the colour of the varnish, that's nice. Very good. Good pictures as always. And why not? Let's just have a quick look at the full size image of that so we can really appreciate it. Nice. And should we just have a look at the. Uh, oh, it disappeared. Let's have a quick look at the back full size. As our swan song, can have a look at that. Okay, excellent. Well, that was it. That was the last uh, item in the sale. Eighty-nine. Uh, interesting um, sale. Lots of different things. Lots of contemporary Italian stuff. A few things here and there. A little bit of a mixture of everything. Uh, great pictures. Great information. Um, you know, you can email for the condition reports. No, good auction. I like it. Uh, if I had to pick something, I would have to pick uh, this, the English Violin by John Johnson. Uh, I think, you know, as you know, I like the old English violins, and this is quite old, and it has somewhat of a, a charm to it. So I think we will uh, end this uh, auction uh, with me saying that this is my pick, my favourite of the auction. So... Yeah, so this has been the 
Teresio sale that ends tomorrow on the 25th of March 2021 it's been going for a few days now uh, yeah check it out if you're interested link in the description and have a look if you've got big money then this is the fine auction for you so uh, once again thanks a lot for watching and uh, catch you uh, catch you next time so ciao for now many thanks for tuning in to the musical instrument investigator i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then please like uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon